Okay, um, part two of the video, because I accidentally pressed the uh, button on the phone. That's what I don't like about these bloody phone things. Um, they put the buttons in such a position, and then you, you know, and sometimes you touch the touch screen and it turns the video, and then you've got to do part two. Um, otherwise, I could have kept the video going for about 20, 30 minutes. Anyway, part two. If I try not to touch the buttons on the side of the phone, on the side here. Okay, so I'll go to the uh, other picture. This was when I... Uh, oh, th there's an older picture of screen number two that was downstairs, but I'm not sure what year that was taken. I guess very early 1970s at the very least. Um, but they used to, a little bit further along, would be where the surround speakers used to start. Um, I can't tell. I don't think that's an overhead surround there. I don't think that is. I think that might be part of an air conditioner sort of thing. Um, but I think the original overhead surrounds that were in that auditorium were a little bit further back sort of thing uh, because it was uh, the way the... Um, the auditorium it narrowed towards the back and the ceiling height got a little bit um sort of narrow sort of thing in height so i guess the uh the sound engineer or guys or whatever you know i could be an engineer i got i got i got 165 iq i don't need a goddamn phd for christ's sakes um i guess someone must have thought that you know it's going to be a bit awkward around here let's put some you know and see see how that works you know i guess that's what they were they were thinking you know and they uh the of course this picture here this auditorium went back oh gosh probably in, in miniature scale that i would say probably about there probably about there so that'd be about the back wall here that'd be about the back wall up to where that you know, so that was a pretty lengthy Lengthy auditorium where where um, screen one upstairs was a little bit less. Uh, it might have had a Cinerama. It might have had Cinerama, but they they they, they de deactivated the Cinerama. They removed the seventy mil projection before I was even interested. Oh, well, I was born before then, but the Cinerama didn't last that long, and then it got decommissioned and they went uh, they had the projectors taken out I believe and they had 35 mil just put in and that is how it remained until the day it closed down more or less um, well I think I don't think they had any 35 mil left I think they just had rubbish uh, that rubbish digital projection rubbish um, when it when it closed down so what a way to die you know oh dear um, let's go a bit further on. Oh, look, oh, oh, right, oh, I have got a picture there in the ceiling. That's one of the original overhead surrounds. That is the back wall there. And if I go to the other picture, and of course, that's showing the auditorium, and it, the back wall would be, like I say, it would be somewhere back here, yeah? I can't help my hands because I've well, I got ill health and my hands are shaking. Um, so yeah, uh, these are the shoebox auditoriums. There's three of them. To, so there's the entrance where you come in. Yeah, still. Yeah. And you just walk down the corridors. All that, all this here is timber and plasterboard. <laughs> That's all it is, you know. And one of the original existing overhead surrounds is covered up there with a bit of wood. Wow, look at that. Look at that. I know it's very hard to see on the picture because it's seeing reflection and such. My eye sees it a little bit different. Wow. And this is when it was closed down. Uh, someone just took some pictures, you know, before. Um, this was the day it closed down. The last day and that's it. No, we're not going to be open tomorrow. We're closed down now because they got a new um, Odeon. Uh, down the road, which is not all that good. It's got a, it's got one of those eye sense screens with Dolby Atmos and really, 
bit of a disappointment, actually. I mean, sheer utter disappointment. I've heard and felt better in THX cinemas. Anyway, enough of that. I ain't going back to that Odeon downtown. It was a waste of £15. And they haven't got a bath. And they do not have a bath wall behind their um, projection screen. So, really, I'm not wasting. If they haven't got a bath wall, I ain't paying. This here is a picture of one of the small auditoriums at UCI Tower Park where I first uh, had my projection job back in 1989. I know I know what that is there. It's a projection room. But um, <clears throat> the entrance, you know, the, uh, the corridor is behind this wall. And then you walk up behind uh, along it and then there's a door entrance and then that comes into this booth which links on to the other booth behind this wall. Um, you go through one door and then you got to, you know, two cat, 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 cake platters, cake plates in the middle. And then you got the projector over there, the projector over there, uh, Dolby and amplifiers and everything uh, on a basic system on a rack on the wall over there, over there. And then you got the house fader there. So the house fader would be, if I'm turning around this way. I think the house fader would be between here somewhere on the wall. It's a little remote fader, and I think that there, that there is the uh, the sound rack. That there is the uh, the projector, uh, the Victoria Five Cine Mechanica, thirty five mil, and that there I think may have been a slide projector. <laughs> Because um, they, they did these slide advertisements, you know, just simple slide projector uh, to do advertisement. Uh, yeah, that would be the sound rack um, up there somewhere, I think. If, if that is, because I, I never actually stood back here in the auditorium when I worked there and looked back and see, you know, but um, it's on the wall. And I know the sound rack is over that mounted on the wall over that side. Um, it'll be a Dolby, um, a Dolby CP55. Basic amplifiers were quad amplifiers. Yeah, you can buy these on eBay, by the way. Um, they're modified version of a hi-fi amplifier. I think they're only 250 watt, uh, into 8 ohm. And basically all they had was a modification where you... If you had to make any adjustment, you've got to do it at the back of the amplifier. So it's you just got the basics to, to turn the amplifiers on because everything has already been aligned, cali uh, calibrated, aligned. Uh, a little bit of a, a little tiny bit of equalizing adjustment, you know, just to, for a few little tiny problems. That's all. And that is all. Uh, and then you set the delay time on the on the uh, surround, and that's it. Um, and it had Dolby A type with Dolby SR or a Dolby SR A5. Um, so it had real spectral recording. Uh, and now if you look at the overhead surrounds, so this is the smaller auditoriums. You can't see um, the other ones. There's one there in the picture and one, one and one there. And there's an odd one at the back. That was the way it was designed, but it worked. And you know what? It was immersive storytelling. <laughs> that Dolby Labs and these directors today, they really got them sick. They read Dolby Labs today, they really got people synced to their bullshit um, marketing. It's immersive audio storytelling. <laughs> immersive. <laughs> I don't think they were saying that word back then. They, were, they would have been saying that a bit. They would have used another marketing word, you know. Anyway, those are the all original seats that were in the um, auditoriums. Um, and I never did like much the, the small auditoriums because that's the front row and the screen would be about about here in dimensions to this image the screen was start at this angle 
because someone's back here they're pretty they're, they're probably only st they might be standing close to the screen and given the 30 mil 35 mil camera they're using a standard lens by the looks of it <clears throat> doesn't look like no flash by the looks of it <laughs> um yeah the screen would start about here be about here but the screen speakers were way up this high and it, it, it always made it sound awkward to me because the screen height as well is up about here it's stuck because you've got the black masking that's down here there was no sub bass in there and by the way the speakers were ev electro voice um the auditoriums only had a rough care capacity sound pressure level they were only really designed for about a 90 db sound pressure level today when you go there they got it different now because it's under different ownership uh over the years it went to empire cinemas and they bet they killed the empire leicester square so enough of the empire cinemas um but when i went there in 2012 when it was still empire cinemas it I was in one of the larger auditoriums, which I'll go to the picture now. Um, these screens were like, they went from screens one and four and seven to ten for the small ones. And I can't not tell which one's which because they all look the same design. Okay, I'll go to the next picture. Bingo. There's one there and there's another angle there. Now this one, this this angle's better. These would be screens five and six, and uh, I would say this might be possibly screen five, because judging by the wall and such looking, I would say you go in through one, two door entrances to go into f the booth, and the foyer, the foyer, the main entrance, is essentially that way. Oh, and uh, all you do is you you come up to the foyer and you got the sweeties, the hot the hot dogs. May they rest in peace. Um, <clears throat> you got all that behind the projection area, and on the walls you got these little panels to indicate uh, when the film's running. Uh, a red light flashing with an alarm would indicate the. Um, a film has got jammed in the uh, the film gate, or maybe a brain wrap where the film has just got um, undone, and it's it's piled up on the cake platter, and it's just like a mess, and you got to sort it out, you know. Um, <clears throat> and you got amber and green. I think amber amber light was uh, like it's uh, it's like ready to play the film, and green indicates film playing. Um, <clears throat> and you know what booths, uh, what screen auditoriums are playing. And you got a little big piece of paper saying, all oh, right, I've got, I've got to lace up. I've got to go and lace this film up now, okay? Uh, so, yeah, uh, this goes all oh, this cut. This would go behind that wall there would be screen number six. And today, it's nothing like that. It's totally bad news. Um, they got probably a, maybe in screen number six, a dividing wall going down the back here slightly. And no, I doubt these seats will be there because they removed most of the seats because you could use, you, 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 you could walk behind all this. Uh, now it's got a, a wooden floor all on it and it goes up a little bit. All this is in the same position still. Uh, and you've got the worst sound leakage and the feel of another film because of the sub bass and the low frequency transmission. It's like um, if you get a piece of uh, string, uh, tie it to uh, something, pull it tight, you can feel the low frequencies going through it. You can feel sound wave going through it or a piece of wood, put it against a sub bass speaker box. You can feel the vibrations traveling traveling through it, and you get a good tactile vibration sometimes, where you, you might not hear, hear feel the the. You can hear the bass of the frequency, but you can't feel it very well. And you just put a piece of wood between the box, up against another part, a seat, as such, and it's yeah, there it is. 
you can feel it sort of thing, uh, particularly on a concrete floor. Um, but I, 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 I'm i not bothered. Anyway, so this one, this auditorium, they got four on this side and four on the other side. So they got eight where eight overhead surrounds where the smaller auditoriums only had seven. Um, and if you notice the placement and positioning is more similar to how it is today. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Yeah, I've heard it long before all you Atmos nerds. Um, to me, it's, it's not new. The only thing that's new about it is that, okay, it's discreet. And that is the only difference. And you got the pan through and the sound can go from there to there to there to where the sound here is just going to be playing in Dolby Stereo um, Matrix. And the sound is going to be immersive. I'll tell you, I've, I've seen quite a few films uh, in screen five and six, born on the 4th of July, helicopters flying overhead, uh, rain raining down on a tent. And it sounds like, um, like yeah, because I know... He, walks into a tent and he's uh, given a little chit chat and it starts slowly raining and then it gets a little bit heavy and then I'm going like this you know I've done all that shit long before you lot um <clears throat> it's I know what to look for uh, I know what to look for I know what to listen for as an ex-projectionist and whenever it helps people whatever helps people I'm happy to share it. And what I want to talk about is the overhead surrounds and what I think they're about. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. And, oh yeah, I heard Star Wars 97 in there. But I left I left UCI around about 1990. Um, and I saw Star Wars there many, many years later, the reissues, and I heard it with overhead stereo surround because they had DTS... Uh, fitted in then um, only DTS and uh, they still had um, I think uh, Dolby Stereo Matrix A Type and SR because 35 mil was still in. Uh, they didn't. I don't think they fitted a Dolby CP 500 in until a little, maybe a maybe a, a year or maybe a year more, year or two more later because I. I uh, I, I just went back there now and then over the years. I, I didn't go there all the time. Um, but I do miss the original overhead surround because they were pretty neat. They were pretty neat. Uh, but when they did the uh, refurbishment, when they, I think they had Dolby CP500s installed so they can run DTS and SRD, Dolby SRD, they changed everything and they put the uh, surrounds on the side wall. <laughs> And a few of them on the back wall, and all the uh, all the the original, you know, were taken down. All the original overhead surrounds were taken down. Um, but when you think of the placement, and commonly in cinemas, the uh, the surrounds will go at about this height. Well, actually, they 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 keep this one down a little bit lower, and then they move it, you know, because the way the floor is slanting. So they're only doing that just to compensate a little bit for, you know, just a few little things. It's not a big deal here. I keep all my surrounds at the same height because there's no point stepping one down a little bit by about one foot and then moving the other one up a few inches. And It's not necessary in this room. It's not necessary. There, the floor's just sloping down. So, you know, otherwise you notice how they are all even it's not like hey we'll lower this one down a little bit by suspending it on wires you know but you notice how everything da -da 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 is attached to the ceiling now you look at some of the crappy dolby atmos today um they got the sometimes they attach them to the ceiling and sometimes they got them hanging on wires oh my god what's the point of doing that huh so it's i guess it's only like half the overhead surround because when you think about where the the common surround speakers are located sometimes when i'm just running standard dolby stereo matrix or 
uh, 5.0 or 4.1, that's with mono matrix, mono discrete surround, or 5.1 with split surround. Notice the position. I should really relocate the positioning and bring them down a little bit because sometimes the sound image kind of think, well, it's kind of still like kind of overhead because I'm I'm doing that, you know. If depending on the, the the speed of the sound mix and the phantoming when it goes when you when you get a phantom image and then it pans over and so forth, uh, and depending on the frequency and any other fair frequency phase shifting or whatever, I, I most sometimes I do that, you know. Um, sometimes it is the case with this when it's certain things familiar yeah I kind of like uh, look up and think uh, uh, uh. if it's kind of still with ambience and such I know it's it, it it's like floating around me if you turn the surrounds off on and off on and off on and off you notice like Oh, oh yeah, but you know, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, where's the other picture? Where's that other picture? There, this was not also. This was also not the only UCI, I believe. There, there was another one in near Southampton, I think. Uh, it's over here. I'll put the mouse on there because oh, I'm trying to use it on the carpet. Yeah, I'll go to that one there. Yeah, I know it's the door entrances. Um, it's really confusing to really tell, really. Hang on. Uh, go there, go there. I think that's the same picture. I think that's the same auditorium. Because uh, the camera's at a different angle. Because you can see one, two, three, four on that side. But on the other angle, you can only see three because of the angle of the camera. Because the other surround speaker will be up there but it's the angle i think it's the same auditorium i think it's the same auditorium because what, what's the point going into the other one it, they're the same design <laughs> um and sometimes you know even some of the projectionists that, that were there when i was there you know, sometimes they get confused you know you got to look at the uh your timetable what film's playing because you go in and you think oh bloody hell Oh, oh, yeah, you know, you, you get confused because they all look the same. And if an auditoriums, if cinema auditoriums and, well, if dubbing theatres and cinemas were, was all designed exactly the same, exactly, everything, everything, it would then sound and feel the same way. But since everything varies, it's... It's kind of like that a little bit. <laughs> but they were pretty good. They were, you know, absorbent material, just simple absorbent material. You know, uh, pretty basic and pretty simple. Um, I often sometimes sit... Um, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Probably uh, it's a little bit difficult to tell. Probably here or here I would sit. Because uh, the stereo... Uh, whip um, was pretty damn good if you move back a few seats it, it's still good I think when I saw Terminator 2 in there in Dolby SL with a friend I think we were sat well I think we were we went into screen number 5 when we saw it but like I say they all look the same <laughs> I think we were sat somewhere possibly here if not there between here and here I think we were sat it's about roughly about the middle <clears throat> from there. Yeah, it's roughly about the middle there. Line sight from the uh, yeah. Um, I saw Walt World Screen Five with DTS over split surround overhead surround. Wow. You know what? It was immersive with the water storytelling. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's that's it. There's nothing more. There's nothing more I can say. There's nothing more I can share. Someone took this nice picture. I don't know when they took it. 
It could have been taken during 1989. It could have been taken a few years later uh, before, um, obviously, before um, it got refurbished and, you know. So that's a little bit of history there with the overhead surrounds. Uh, the other one was, like, I think, up in um, near Southampton. Um, and uh, I was looking at a video on YouTube, and I noticed straight away, and I thought, bloody hell, I could just barely see the overhead surrounds on the ceiling in the dark. And they were showing a film from, I think it was The House Sitter. That would be Stereo A-type, I think. Um, it's got that guy from the thing, you know, you know, um, uh, I'd rather not sit in this fucking couch. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I was listening to the acoustic, the echo of the, uh, you know, the camera going in and, and it sounded, you know what? It sounded exactly like. It sounded exactly like that. It's amazing how my brain, my recall, even though I'm I'm slightly get dementia sometimes, it's only a question where it catches up and it you know it gets worse. Because I think after five heart attacks, um, it's kind of messed with my you know it's just messed with me. I'm I'm not usually myself anymore. I'm totally. Uh, I wouldn't, let's just say, I wouldn't, I, um, I wouldn't employ myself because, uh, um, my, my health condition is just like, <clears throat> but I'm lucky to still be alive anyway after five and it's thank goodness I don't smoke and I don't drink and do drugs and, you know, anyway, um, that's that. That's just a bit of overhead surround UK history, and that was 1989. That were, those those um, were built, and to have ten screens overhead surround that that is really, and another because I didn't know the other locations had them. That is kind of unheard of because commonly. The surround speakers would always be fitted on the side walls and the back wall in a horseshoe shape. Um, so I suppose, um, yeah, because it doesn't matter with the Matrix, mono, uh, Dolby Stereo Matrix, if you sat back here, you're still going to get surround. It's going to sound a little bit weird with the screen channels. I would never, 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 never sit over the side. I'd always... Because I know it's it's artificial sound, and if you sit over there, it's going to be a little bit weird, uh, particularly with the screen speakers. Um, but always, when I was in booth, sometimes you know, if I had the late, if I had, if I got a lace up a film, and you know, and, do, and then you go do training and theory um, <coughs> about. Uh, electricity and gases, inert gases and such. Oh, and who invented this and that and why it's been invented and how it creates the motion picture image. Without the shutter blade in the projector, which is three blades, turning the light on and off, on and off. They're not like that. They're, they're like a, a fan there, a fan there and a fan there and they turn the light on and off. And there's also the other thing called what's called the Maltese Cross, which is on the Mechanica projector. And it's a little, it's, it's, it's a very recognized symbol to, to, to project. Oh, fuck's sake. So I picked a heck of a top for, 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 for projectionists to, to know anyway. And then that has a certain turning motion. And, um, Without those basics, uh, if one of them were to fail, you you would just see film running through the project. You would just see it on my screen and think, "What the bloody hell!" You wouldn't be able to make out what's what's happening. Um, it's like if you see an NTSC signal on a PAL TV many years ago, all you get is roll bars. Now, if you put your fingers like that and do that, 
in front of your eyes, yeah, you know, you close one eye and do that, you create a strobe effect, and then you can just make out the image going still, like in the middle, if, a, if it's a scope movie, yeah, and you can just make, you can just make it out, or I could, you can just make it out, and all it is is you're creating a strobing effect, and that's all basically it is, it's just creating a strobe effect where the light is turned on and off, on and off at a fast rate of speed. Um, oh yeah, I miss those, I miss those days, but it's water under the bridge. It's water under the bridge. Now, I don't care for cinema projection anymore because it's all button pushing. You're only, you're only pushing buttons now and digital cinema is rubbish. It's not an opinion. It is rubbish because, it, it, it you know, you got no, you got no real presentation there anymore. What? you can see in a cinema now is more or less what you could do in the home and you know even when, when you do it in the home it's kind of like pfft. because if i wanted to do it do it like the cinema this eight denon which is a flagship when you turn if i were to turn there okay it's on that now i'm going to turn it one two three i can't wait that bloody long it's got to be like that the moment i turn that it's got to be instant when you see the illusion in cinema um, from, you know, providing the projectionist is not dead <laughs> or is a, a alert and ready, it, the slight hand of trickery that goes on in the in, in, in booth would stagger you. Like, it's just like when you watch TV and you see commercial breaks and all that. It's similar. It's similar. Only it's um, a bit nerve-wracking, you know. You've got hundreds of people in an auditorium, you know, and you want them to be amazed. Uh, so when you're turning the bowser down to shut the light off and do changes uh, between um, advertisement to trailers to um, um, doing it again and then up fading it up again uh, when changing sound format from maybe Dolby A type to SR <laughs> switching the aperture plate pulling the aperture plate out and um, changing the lens round from widescreen to scope or changing it from flat to scope adjusting the masking formats uh, ready and then you open the dowser the light comes up and then you just gradually fade the fader up up to maybe often it was about fader six because the, the chief projectionist never liked it at seven i don't know why maybe it was just a few db too loud because between fader uh seven and six it's just a few db you know it'd be it'd be easier yeah to still play it at seven but just equalize it a little bit you know, have an outboard additional equaliser where you're just taming the frequencies where it might be like a bit harsh or something. But I never heard one film leaking into the other in other auditorium because they were played at a, a realistic, sensible level, and it was always good. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like the UCI at um, Buckinghamshire High Wycombe UCI. It wasn't like the THX cinema uh, where literally the base is pressing into your face your chest your stomach your legs your feet and uh that was one of a kind it may it makes car it makes car hi-fi sub bass sound rubbish um <laughs> especially when it's that size yeah and you're only sitting in a pissy little car where it's resonating, making horrible noises, and you got this bass that's just un so unnatural you wouldn't even hear it in the real world unless it's in someone's rubbish car. Sorry, but you know, your car hi fi's are rubbish. Make something that's good, then impress me. I don't want to hear a load of air turbulence blowing around. 
because even when is even when the natural wind is pushing air, their air pressure changes and the wind is moving around like this and that and you know it's not 150 fucking db you know it's yeah go figure um <clears throat> yeah that's it that's basically it you know so a little bit of ranting a little a little bit of um you know um that's it i think more about it i like that i like that that's a long time ago that still seems like only a few seconds it seems like i could just leave my home here now and go down there but that does not exist anymore like that it does not exist like that anymore oh well but you know if I wanted to have my overhead surrounds it configured more or less the same way so I can play not just Dolby Atmos but configure it to play mono matrix overhead surround so it'd be I can mimic maybe UCI sort of thing that ain't a problem there are not many home cinemas that have got um, or home theatres that have got a setup as complex as this. Period. Oh, they got a lot of equipment and they say it costs so much money. Yeah, okay, yeah. All right. Most of this is cheap, and I mean cheap. You just have to know what to look on eBay. And um, the icing on the cake, really, here is. Uh, the Lucasfilm Limited THX sound system, and I don't know of any home theatre that's got one to brag. And there's 20,000 kilowatt, and um, oh yeah, there's there's the Dolby SA SRA5s. I've got nearly up to eight Dolby SR cards here, so once I get everything rigged up, oh yeah, a little bit more, oh yeah, this this home cinema can do it all, except. Um, crappy 3d well i don't want that i've got 4k projection back there so i hardly run the 4k projector wow i buy a 4k projector that's all the is this and that and i hardly use it well at least the lamp time's gonna last you know yeah <sighs>